Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hope all is well. Hope everyone is doing all right. Hope you had a great weekend. All right, looks like everybody's in. Oh, got a few people still trying to connect, but okay, we're all right. Okay, good morning, good morning. Hope everybody's doing great. Uh, for those who are local, you know, I hope you made it through the snow all right. And yep, yep, yep. So we are still in chapter three somewhere. Let's see how far do we get? I think we did three, two, we're about to do three, four. Hold on one second. Three, five, three, four. Okay, there we go. Okay, so you guys correct me if I'm wrong. I believe last class we did three, one, and three, two. And uh, there is no three, three. And so we're gonna do three, four today. So uh, last class, we should have done the empirical rule and should be right here for three, four. So, you know, for those who are, you know, making sure their notes are straight, make sure, you know, if I said something wrong, please let me know. All right. All right. So 3.4 measures of position and outliers. Okay. So, and um, hold on one second. Yeah, okay. So Z-scores is going to be the distance the data value is from the mean in terms of standard deviations. The general formula for your z-score is the data value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And so here, which is, if you were to use the symbols when we talked about last class, how your population and your sample had different symbols. So if you were represented with symbols, this would be the population a uh, way of representing, representing that formula here. This would be the sample way of representing that formula. Either way, all three of these are the same thing. They're saying the same thing. It's your data value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. All right, let's scroll up. All right, so the z-score, now here is just two facts. You know, the z-score, the z-score is unitless and it has the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. So when we get to our z-score chart, um, you'll see what we mean by having a mean of zero, standard deviation of one. But um, right now, that's, that's a statement that will probably come up um, in math lab. So if they ask the mean and standard deviation of z-scores, uh, it'd be zero and one. But like I said, when we get to our z-score chart, you'll see what we mean about that or with that. Anybody holding on to the green and purple? All right, so here's our first example using z-scores. 
I'll give you a chance to copy. It says, determine whether the Angels or Rockies had a relatively better run-producing season. The Angels scored 773 runs and played in the American League, where the mean was 677.4 and standard deviation was 51.7. The Rockies scored 755 runs and played in the National League, where the mean was 640 and standard deviation, I wrote SD for standard deviation, was 55.9. All right. So like I said, I'll give you a chance to copy that for those who are copying. Um, yeah, I'll give you a chance to copy. All right. So once again, uh, determine whether the Angels or Rockies had a relatively better run producing season. The Angels scored 773 runs and played in the American League, where the mean was 677.4, standard deviation was 51.7. The Rockies scored 755, played in the National League, where the mean was 640, standard deviation was 55.9. So uh, if you know a little bit about baseball, or if you don't, uh, know anything about baseball, the National League and American League have uh, slightly different rules. So that's why um, it's significant to compare uh, whether it means stuff like that to each other because they have slightly different rules and they're different, different leagues within the Major League Baseball. So what we're going to do is uh, convert the Angels uh, score, uh, scored runs and then convert the Rockies scored runs separately into Z scores so that we can compare them. So uh, looking at what they've given us, the Angels scored 773. That's our data value that we're going to convert. Mean 677.4, standard deviation 51.7. Rockies 755 is our data value. Mean 640, standard deviation 55.9. So all we did was took all the information from the uh, problem, just wrote it down according to our symbols. to convert it to Z-score. Data value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And we're gonna talk about what these values mean in a second. So yes, 773 minus 677.4 divided by 51.7 is 1.85. 75 minus 640 divided by 55.9 is 2.06. And we are always going to round our z-scores to two decimal places. That's going to matter when we get to the z-score chart. Doesn't matter right now, but MathLash should be holding you to the standard of rounding to two decimal places. Everybody okay so far? All right. So what does that mean? So it means the angels score 1.85 standard deviations above the mean. Um, and it's above because it's positive. It is possible for your z-score to be negative. If it was negative 1.85, then the angels would have scored 1.85 standard deviations below the mean. So if it's positive, it's above the mean. If it's below, if it's negative, it's below the mean. 
And then the Rockies scored 2.06 standard deviations above the mean. So this means that the Rockies had a better run producing year. All right, any questions before we go any further? Are you okay? All right, I'm still copying. I'll pause right here. Am I just on mute? Is that a question? All right, scrolling up a little. So percentiles, um, the kth percentile of a set of data is a value such that k percent of the observations are less than or equal to the value. Yep, we're going to talk about it in a second. I was just giving you guys a chance to finish up. All right, is everybody done with the green? All right, so the k percentile is denoted by P sub k. That k is a little smaller than the P, so it's P sub k over just PK. So Jennifer just received the results of her SAT exam. Her SAT math score is 600. Uh, her SAT math score of 600 is in the 74th percentile. What does this mean? If I hold on to black.
All right, so the red is the interpretation of that. So 74% of the people who took the exam scored 600 or less. All right. So that's what it means for a percentile. It gives you less than or equal to. And then 26% uh, scored uh, better. And so you get that 26% from you know, 100 minus 74. Questions on that so far? Make sure we're okay. All right, how far you need me to go up? Mm -mm. So. Hold on one second. Let me let them finish. If you got to go way back up there, let's finish this statement. And then uh, you can let me know how far you want to go up. All right, so I have to scroll up for a second. Uh, is everybody done with the red? Is anybody still copying this? All right, so there's that definition. Let me know once you've finished so we can uh, move to the next thing. Yeah, no problem. Not a problem at all. All right, anything else on percentiles that somebody's copying? Make sure we're good before I scroll. We're good, everybody good. All right. So quartiles, next thing, divides the data set into fourths. So quartiles divide the data set into fourths. So we have our minimum and maximum as bookends. Then on the inside, we have Q1, Q2, Q3, quartile one, quartile two, and quartile three. All right. So to find our quartiles, first thing you need to do is list your data values from least to greatest. Always make sure you do that first. A lot of times people forget that step. Then you will find quartile two first because it's going to be the median of the first set of data. I mean, of the whole set of data. 
Q1 is going to be the median of the first half of your data. And then Q3 will be the median of the second half of data. So all of them are medians. And you just find, them, in other words, middle values. So you find the middle value of the whole set of data, that's Q2. Then you find the middle value of the second half of data, I mean, first half of data, which is Q1. Then you find the middle value of the second half of data, which is Q3. All right, so uh, before we find quartiles, I got a few more instructions and then we'll just do them all together in a, in a, in a single problem. So next thing we'll look at is the interquartile range. That's the range of the middle 50% of your data. You'll find that by doing uh, Q3 minus Q1. All right. And we will be able to check for outliers. So before we talked about outliers, uh, we just said that there were very extreme values um, in comparison to your data set. So they can be very, very large or very, very small. But now we have a numerical value. We can create a numerical value that would actually solidify. If something is greater than this, it's considered an outlier, or something that's smaller than this number, it's considered an outlier. So that's what we'll call them. Uh, so we'll call those fences. Our upper fence is Q3 plus 1.5 times your IQR. The lower fence is Q1 minus 1.5 times your IQR. Some some books call them boundaries, you know. So you have to go looking up stuff. Upper boundary, lower boundary, same thing. Formula would be the same. Q3 plus 1.5 times your IQR. Q1 minus 1.5 times your IQR. So if the data value is greater than the upper fence, then it is an outlier. If it's less than the lower fence, it is an outlier.
All right, let me scroll up. Let me see. Still copying. Okay. Oh, no, you don't have to apologize. All right, so those data values, you can start copying if you like. I got to erase some stuff, but that's a lot of still copying, so I'm giving them a chance. All right, how much are you copying? Just need the green? Do I need to scroll back up? Are you good? All right, so this was outliers. All right, so did that did that cover it or you see anything from you? So okay, here we go. Okay, cool. All right, so let's look at this data set. We have, um, I have these circles here. That's those me notating things. Let me erase it. So have this data set right here. I went ahead and started off listing it from least to greatest. You may not necessarily get your data values, you know, already listed from least to greatest. That's always going to be your first step, taking your data set and ensuring that your data set is listed from least to greatest. So we have 180, 189, 370, 618, 735. 802, 1185, 1414, 1657. And notice how I uh, set up my data values. I counted them out, had 18 all together. That's what I have right here, circle in red. So I broke it up uh, in such a way that it's half and half, kind of sort of nine data values right here. Uh, well, it's not right. Okay, nine data values here and then nine data values here just to help me out when it goes to breaking up and trying to find my middle value. Remember your quartiles are just your middle values. So I broke it up when I did my relisting of them in, from least to greatest, I broke it up in that way so that I will be able to see uh, my data value, my middle values. So then the second half of data, 1953, 2332, 2336, 3461, 46, 68, 6751, 99, 8, uh, 08, 10,034, 21,147. So your first step is just to list your data values from least to All right, so the next step is to find Q2. Now we have 18 data values. So that means there is not a legit middle value. 
That means we need to take the two middle values, add them together and divide by two. Remember whenever you're trying to find your median and you have an even number of data values, that is the move that you would make. So you take 1657 and 1953, add them together and divide by two and Q2 is going to be 1805. All right. So then we refine Q1. Now Q1 is going to be easier because we have nine data values. You know, we split our data in half. We had 18 data values all together. Split it in half, that means you have nine on top, nine on bottom. So that means you have an odd number on top. That means there is a legit middle value, which is 735. So we don't have to do any calculation there. And then the same thing for Q3, the middle value is 4668. Questions, any questions on finding your quartiles? Talking about for your quartiles, um, no, that's based on positioning. Your, quart uh, your quartiles are the middle values. They're your medians of your data set. So um, whatever your middle value is for the whole data set is Q2. The middle value of the first half of data is Q1. And then the middle value of the second half of your data is Q3. So you're talking about the middle values. Yep. All right, can I scroll up? Let's see, someone says something. Oh, yeah, no problem. Scroll up. Okay. So the IQR, remember our integral quartal range is Q3 minus Q1. So that's just taking the values we just found and subtracting them from each other. So 466, what's that? 466, 46, 68. Minus 735 is All right, everybody okay with step five? Can we go to step six? Mm -hmm. So now we're going to determine our fences. Determine your fences, DET, determine. Uh, you know, remember I mentioned we have an upper fence and a lower fence. So the upper fence is Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR. And of course, we already found Q3 and IQR. So we plug those in accordingly. That's 46, 68 plus 1.5 times 39, 33. And that'll end up giving us 10,567.5 as our upper fence. And by holding on to step five. Step five, we okay? Okay. 
So then to find our lower fence, Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR, 735 minus 1.5 times 39.33, and that'll give us a negative 5164.5. And we'll interpret that in a second. Just give you guys a chance to write. Yep, yep, negative is fine. All right, can we scroll up? So now for our last step, we can determine whether if there are any outliers. And the answer is yes, because 21 147, that's the largest value that we had in our data set, is greater than the upper fence. Any problems, any questions? Upper fence, that was what we just found right here, upper fence. All right, everybody good? Questions, questions? Anybody see a copy? All right, so three, five is very similar to what we just did in three, four. Every lecture should be not. Um, oh, okay. I was I'm not sure. I'm about to go to dictionary.com. Like, hold up, let me. <laughs> yeah. Um, every lecture that we have on Zoom is going to be recorded, and then um, no, it's all good. Man. It's all good. Every lecture that we have on um. Uh, on Zoom, you know, it was going to be recorded and I'm going to put on YouTube, if that's what you mean. And um, I'll send you guys a link out. Yep. So I've done that up to this point. Yeah, I thought I sent one out for this week. I'll check to make sure. But I believe I already sent that lecture out. Oh, I thought I sent it out this weekend. But uh, yep, every weekend I send those lectures out. Mm -hmm. So uh Check your emails and check Canvas announcements. It should be, normally I, I label those emails uh, class lecture or class lecture link, something like that. So uh, 3.5 is the same thing, except it just add uh, this box plot, which is leaning on what you find in your five number summary. And you see our five number summary 
is what we just found, your minimum, your maximum, which is given, and then Q1, Q2, and Q3. So that's your five number summary. And then, like I said, when you do our, when we do our box plots, you use your five number summary in order to establish your lines. So it's just taking what we just did in the last section and I'll add an extra step. All right, can we scroll up? Yep. Yep, that's the five number summary right here. Anybody holding on to the purple? All right, everybody good, purple, purple, gone, okay. So box plots, it's a graphical tool used to compare groups of data. It consists of a box with lines that extend to the minimum and maximum values that are not outliers. Box plot and box, and box and risk is the same thing. Box plot and box and risk is the same thing. It probably is, it's just another way of labeling it another way of calling it that yep probably is because i i don't think of anything i can't think of anything else that you could be referring to other than on um, the box plot yeah nope mm -mm. so um it consists of a box with lines that extend to the minimum and maximum values that are not outliers these lines are called whiskers Outliers are represented by an asterisk. So we're doing a modified box plot in this section, wherein uh, we use an asterisk to represent the outliers. Uh, well, I'll scroll down a second, just wanna make sure everybody's okay with what we have. All right, here's the generic representation of a box plot. Notice we have um, our box in the middle and the three lines represents Q1, Q2, and Q3. Then extending from the box, we have our whiskers and they extend out to the minimum and maximum value that are not outliers. Anything that is an outlier will be represented by asterisks. Of course, you can't have more than one outside outlier. You can't have one on either side but they will be represented by asterisks. All right. And by holding on to the box plot. All right, so 
Um, let's do this example that summarize everything that's going on in 3.5 says give the five number summary and sketch the box plot. So I just wrote a note, something that I referenced to last section. The data set is not always written from least to greatest. So make sure this is the case before you move forward. Give you a chance to write that out. All right, scrolling up. I wrote a lot of notes here. Am I still holding on to the red statement? Oh, it should be good enough right there. All right, so here are data values. Is that good enough? No, if I went up too far. There we go. So here are our data values. Now give you guys a chance to copy. Uh, we have 21 data values this time. And notice once again, I tried to set myself up of having half and half. But if I have 21 data values, that means I have a legit middle number, a middle value. And that's what I did. And you see right there in the purple, purple circle. So I wrote 10 up top, middle value, 10 down bottom. Once again, you don't have to do it this way. If you just want to list them all out in one line, it'd be however you want to handle it, it's up to you. But I just write the data. When I go to relist my data values from least to greatest, I try to set myself up for success moving forward. And I know I need middle values. So I go ahead and break it up in half so that I can easily find my middle values moving forward. All right, so are we good to move to step two? So like I mentioned before, we have 21 data values. So that means we have a legit middle value, which is 30.95. And so Q2 is always the middle value of your whole data set. So that's 30.95.
All right. So now to find Q1 and then Q2, we'll take the middle value of the first half of data, which is Q1, middle value of the second half of data, which is Q3. So don't forget though, we have 10 data values in each you know, set, the top half and the bottom half. So since that's an even number, that means we don't have a middle number. Take the two middle numbers, add them together and divide by two. So that's what I did for Q1. That's what I used uh, to signify the green circles. So that's 25.83 plus 26.28 divided by two. And Q1 is gonna be 26.06. Right, and then to find Q3, 37.05 plus 37.43, divide by two, add them together and divide by two, that give us 37.24. All right, are we okay with scrolling up? So let's see some chat. 24.37. You said it says 24.37. Yeah, 37.24. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. So we're following the same steps that we followed last section. Uh, so the next step is to find the IQ off Q3 minus Q1, 37.24 minus 26.06. It gives us 11.18. Everybody holding on to green. Dark blue. All right, so next move, we're going to uh, establish our fences, determine our fences. All right, so Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR is our lower fence. Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR is our upper fence. You know, sometimes they call left limit, right limit. You know, sometimes they call it boundaries. So. I was just giving terminology here, but it's all the same thing, whether it's your limits, fences, or boundaries, you're finding the same thing. The formula is still going to be the same, Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR, Q3 plus 1.5 times your IQR. So our lower fence will be 9.29. Our upper fence will be 54.01. And down here in the red, just a reminder as to what our upper fences, what our fences mean to us. Uh, if a value is less than the lower fence or greater than the upper fence, it is an outlier. So that's going to help us establish what values of our data set will be an outlier for us.
So we're done with IQR. All right, so last step, and then we'll be able to finish off the problem. Determine your outliers. So 54.63 is an outlier because it is greater than the upper fence. All right, can I scroll up some? Anybody still hold on to light blue? All right, so five number summary. You take your minimum, which is the smallest value, 1995, Q1, Q2, and Q3, which is what we found, 26.06, 30.95. 37.24, and then our largest value, which is 54.63. That's our five number summary. Sorry about that head sneeze. Are we done with the orange? Scroll up. All right. Then the last part is our box plot. So uh, it we have our Q1, Q2, and Q3. Right here, they establish our vertical lines of our boxes, of our box, vertical lines of our box. Then the whiskers extend out to the largest and smallest values that are not outliers. So our minimum was 1995, that was okay. But remember our maximum value was an outlier. So our whiskers does not extend out to the outlier. Remember we said we're gonna represent outliers with an asterisk. So that means we go to the next value down, which is 49.17. You know, it comes from our data set, 49.17. It extends out there, and then we use an asterisk to represent the 54.63. Any questions, any questions? Um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, it says the max is not an outlier, but it says on number five, the max is 54.63. I don't get it. The, um, the maximum value that is not an outlier, it extends to the maximum value that is not an outlier. Yeah. So this is the maximum value that we have. But oh. our, yeah, but our whisker only goes to the maximum value that is not an outlier. So that's why it couldn't extend all the way to the 54.63. And um, and I think you, you said you got it, but I just want to make sure everybody's straight. So here is the next value up. You know, this what value is an outlier, so the whisker wouldn't extend to that. And uh, so it goes to 49.17. So this value right here 
it's our max value, but our box plot extends to the value that is not an outlier. Okay, thank you. Yep, yep, no problem. So is everybody okay with that? Now this has nothing to do with, you know, being an outlier, these minimums, maximums. As far as your five number summary has nothing to do with being an outlier or not. That's just your summary. What is your minimum? What is your maximum? But when it goes to our box plot, they don't extend out to outliers. So, you know, that's how you would handle that. All right. Everybody else, anybody else, excuse me, any questions? That's it for three five. So, so make sure we're good. Body straight. Anybody still copying? All right, let's see what I got down here. All right. So um, at this point, we are done with chapter three. So that means you have three chapters uh, that you have responsible for. Chapter one, chapter two. Yep, yep, that's it for chapter three. Yep, and that's what I was trying to warn you about, uh, being careful with um, chapter three and chapter four because they are quick. Chapter four is only three sections. So I really could do all three sections in one chapter if I were, I mean, one sitting if I you know, do it right, but, um, or nothing else. Start chapter four, when I start chapter four, start chapter five in a sitting. You know, basically, it's a, if I want to cram and start throwing stuff at you, I could. So we're not going to do it though. Um, but I'm just letting you know where we are right now. Chapter one, chapter two, and chapter three is uh, completed as far as the lecture is concerned. Um, are we still copying this? Is everybody done? I want to see if there's anything else writing down here. Okay. Pretty good. So, Chapter one, chapter two, and chapter three is uh, homework in math lab. Chapter one's test is chapter one and chapter two. And then if you have not sent me those definitions yet, make sure you give them to me. Uh, you don't want a zero for uh, an easy grade. All right. So test two is chapter three, chapter four. So we're not done with chapter four yet. So you don't have to worry about test two as of right now. But just making sure we understand. And this is somebody else. But just making sure we understand what um, is on the table right now for you guys to uh, knock out. Okay. Um, questions on what is being what is expected of you up to this point? Everybody good? Everybody straight? Um, let me see. Have a question. I'm listening. Yes. Um. So, well, I already sent the definition for chapter one and chapter two. There's more definitions. To send? No, that I'm just talking about chapter one and chapter two. Um, so I don't have to. There is no more definitions to solve and send in before the test. No, no, uh, -uh. no. It's just that some people uh, haven't sent those yet. So I was just saying, if you haven't sent chapter one, chapter two definitions to me, you know, you want to go ahead and get those to me uh, as soon as possible. Oh, yep. okay. Yep, yep. Thank you. Yep, yep. Not a problem. And so those definitions that she's referencing are right here. If you've done these two, chapter one and chapter two definitions, then you are good to go. Um, do I want to do an assignment? No, you guys got stuff to do. No, we can come back to that. So yeah, so these chapter one and chapter two definitions, you want to uh, go ahead and knock those out. All right, questions, concerns, comments before we close out today. Everybody good? I'm sorry, I have another question. Mm -hmm. We have to send, we have to solve the assignment one. No, the... well, I, I was about to mention that um, they're not due as of yet, haven't put a due date on them. I was gonna tell you that uh, if anybody is in a position to go ahead and knock them out, then they can, but I'm not asking for them right yet. Um, I probably won't ask for them until after chapter until after we knock out chapter four and we use them as a review uh, to make sure you guys are okay going to, ch to chapter two's test. But if anybody wants to get ahead, we are going to do assignment one and assignment two. So notice there are problems. So the answers are in the back. So it's not an assignment to be uh, challenging in such a way that it's breaking your brain. 
but it's a way to gauge yourself to see if you're ready to uh, move on from chapter three and chapter four. So both of those have just with three problems here and then four problems here. So seven problems all together. And it's just going in, knocking them out, and then checking your answers according to what's in the back of the book. If you cannot get up, get what they got in the back of the book, then that means you need to ask me some questions. Um, once again, they're not due yet, but if you want to move ahead and get them out of the way, then you can, uh, as far as chapter three is concerned. Uh, just reemphasizing what we just did, like, you know, box plot, five number summary, Q, you know, quartiles and stuff like that. So um, once again, there's no due date on that yet, uh, but we will, I will ask for them at some point. So it's up to you if you want to move ahead or just wait till, you know, we get to that point. All right. And now you will submit those the same way you would submit, uh, same way you submitted your definitions, just doing them on paper and, and then taking a picture, shooting them to me in an email. Okay, questions, questions. Everybody good, everybody straight? I have a question. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, when we take the test, we email you our notes, right? Yes, any scratch work, you'll shoot that email uh -huh. to me. Mm -hmm. yep. And it may not be much, that's just a general statement that I send out to all of my classes. Some classes like pre calc or calculus most definitely will have work. You guys, especially since you're using stuff like easycalculation.com, you may not have that much work. So, um, but if you do, it's, you know, then you can shoot that to me. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. Anything else, anybody else? All right. So that's it for today, guys. Have a great one. Be safe. Every day is an opportunity for questions. So if you try something out in chapter three, get stuck, feel free to ask it. Other than that, um, next class, we'll get started in chapter four. You guys have a good one. Yep, take care, you have a good one as well.